Good morning. Welcome to OldStMary's.com and our celebration of the Mass for Wednesday of the second week of Lent. We are happy to welcome you all with us. We are also especially happy to welcome this morning some of our eighth grade class from Old St. Mary's School. Moving forward next week, we will have different uh, classes joining us for Mass during the week, so we are happy to be reconnecting more people to our celebrations. Even though today's celebration is Wednesday of the second week of Lent, one of the uh, options for today would be Catherine Drexel, a United States citizen and saint of the church who grew up in Philadelphia, a, a daughter of very wealthy parents, but also very devout parents who helped her to understand the faith. And early on, she kind of gave up her uh, ability to be an heiress and took on as her ministry ministry to the indigenous Indians and the blacks, especially across the United States and in the West. She is responsible for the founding of Xavier University in New Orleans and established religious orders and teaching for the poor and the needy throughout her country. So it's, hap it's a good thing to reflect on her today as we celebrate Wednesday of the second week of Lent. Forsake me not, O Lord. My God, be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my strong salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we come in celebration, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask for God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family always schooled in good works, and so comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem said, Come, let us contrive a plot against Jeremiah. It will not mean the loss of instruction from the priests, nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil? 
that they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. I hear the whispers of the crowd that frighten me from every side as they consult together against me, plotting to take my life. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my precursors. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in your kingdom. And Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. So first a word about true prophets. So Jeremiah is one of those we would put in the category of true prophet, and and he is probably one of the prophets that's most uh, that, that's most, um, I lost my word. He's probably the prophet that, that is most uh, downtrodden, beaten up by his people. Every prophet that is true to God's word says what God gives them to say, whether people want to hear it or not. And based on the backlash we hear from the people around Jeremiah, they didn't want to hear what Jeremiah was saying. And so they they are going to mistreat him. They are going to cast him down into a pit, literally. And yet his word has effect. 
his message is meant to get out and, and to be heard and, and to shake things up. In Jesus today, we have a kind of a mixed story. We, we start with Jesus. He's going up to Jerusalem so we can clearly see what, what we've heard from um, in the last few weeks. Jesus' eyes are solidly focused on Jerusalem, where he will be persecuted, he will be killed, where he will be raised up, and people don't always get all of that. And especially at this point in the gospel, they, they don't really understand this. But it's in, it's in the midst of this, trying to figure that out, that, of course, the brothers Zebedee, John and James, come up with their mom, and their mom is bold enough to ask that, that they get the seats of honor at the banquet. At the banquet. But, but, of course, Jesus says, well, what you're asking for, I, I can't really describe how that's going to happen and, and what will happen with them. I do know they are going to follow me. So she should get a hint from that, that, that um, they are going to follow Jesus and they'll be rewarded that way. But it's also the reminder that the disciples of Jesus like the prophets themselves, are going to have to go through persecution before they get to really receiving their reward. But the reward doesn't go separately from the persecution. There, there's always struggle when you're trying to speak the truth to power. And in Jesus' case, the leaders of, of the Jewish nation and even the Romans do not get what he is trying to do. He's trying to go deeper than sociopolitical um, ideas of the world of his day and age. He's trying to say there's something bigger than that. And you could see why it would offend them. Oh, someone's bigger than the king? Someone's bigger than Caesar? And of course, Jesus is, is pushing us to see it's God first. And when we see that, then being a prophet makes sense. When we see that, being a disciple makes sense. When we see that, we understand what Jesus is giving us is eternal life. And so as we continue our Lenten journey, let us keep our eyes on Jesus and realize there are some hard things going on that we have to answer for for ourselves. We have to be true to the truth. We have to see where Christ is leading us. And may he indeed lead us and bless us in the rest of our Lenten journey. And let us raise our prayers to the God who loves us. We pray for the church during this time of Lent, that all the different stories, all the different people who populate our scriptures will help us be more clear about how we follow Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray that the world will be open to the messages of good news and that the leaders of nations will know best how to use the talents and abilities of the people they lead. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an overcoming of the coronavirus. We pray for healing for those who are sick with the virus. We pray for guidance that those taking care of all the people who are sick will find the best ways to make us all well. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the many intentions we've been asked to pray for, everyone who has asked us for prayers, all those for whom we have promised to pray, people who are at crossroads in their lives this day, we pray to the Lord. We pause a moment so that those people who are joining us online may raise up any prayers that they have in their group or with their people. And as they do their prayers out loud, let us reflect in our own hearts what they may be saying. For all of these prayers, we pray to the Lord. 
We also pray in a special way today for the intentions of this Mass. Two sisters, Luz Duller and Letizia Quibrantar, for them and for all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, accept our prayers as we place them before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased to work your sanctification within us by means of these mysteries, O Lord, and let it and by it may we be cleansed of earthly faults and led to the gifts of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, Catherine Drexel, your blessed apostles, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. In some appropriate way, let us offer each other a sign of Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. So for those who have not been here before, uh, the flow for communion Simply follow the directions of the ushers. They will bring you toward them, sanitize your hands, and then proceed in the usual manner. With the students joining us, just so these two sections know, just remember to keep your distance between each other as you move back to your places. There, there should be plenty of room. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my world. 
but only say the word.
Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant that what you have given us as the pledge of immortality may work for our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads for God's blessing. Lord, bestow upon your servants an abundance of grace and protection. Grant health of mind and body. Grant fullness of fraternal charity and make them always devoted to you through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now to share the love of Christ. <laughs>